Welcome back, lovelies. Um, it's Marie here from Marie's Acrylic and Gel Nails in sunny central Queensland. What I'm speaking to you today about is I have this gorgeous little folder um, where I keep stuff that I have printed off from the Australian Fingernail Association. As I said um, in earlier videos, oh, I'm all about education. Um, with my clients and people I know and I well the Australian nail technicians are not regulated over here we don't have to be um, accredited we don't have a governing body like I said my my certificate is a nationally accredited certificate if the Australian Fingernail Association get their way and we do become accredited um, and have to have accreditations, I won't have any trouble getting licensed in that because I'm already nationally accredited. So it's very important if you're an Australian girl looking at some of these nail courses that I have seen online um, and that, that they are Australian nationally accredited. Um, but, you know, um, if you have any questions on that um, further, please get in contact with me and I can chat to you further about that. Um, what I wanted to do was just read some of this for you guys about what the Australian Fingernail Association and why I'm a paid member of it, what they do for consumers and, and for us nail technicians. Um, I can advertise on their website. Um, they've got me on there that I am a member of them. I follow their guidelines. I have a little badge and all sorts of things. I get into trade shows a lot cheaper. Um, I, any new techniques that are coming out and things like that, I, I'm told of um, on their website and told where I can go to get training on it and everything, which is really important. The first thing I want to tell you is, um, the first one I'm going to read is about what a customer should look at. Um, it's called Consumer Guidelines for Professional Services when they walk into a salon. So, of course, Sense says to the customer that the salon floor and the workstation should be generally clean and free of nail clippings, dust and debris. It's very important to clean those stations, girls. You should always be able to fully communicate with the staff, your nail tech, about your personal needs. Um, what I do and what they recommend is I have a client card and a quick rundown. It, I ask their name, their address, their contact number, what's the best times for them for appointments, um, what type of work they do what type of sports and hobbies they, they do because, you know, if you play, for example, um, netball um, and you're an office worker, well, A, you don't want to have to tape your nails and you don't want them uberly long and B, you want to be able to do your job more efficiently. Um, do you wear gloves when you're gardening and doing your housework? Um, at our nails aren't tools. It, it gives me an idea of what these clients know, what they do. And my, I like to guarantee my work. So if I've got a client that's come back after two days and the nails come off, but they've been cleaning their bathroom with no gloves on, that's not my fault. Um, some people have lifting. I know if I'm wearing gel nails and I use Domestos, that's it. Say la vie to my gel nails. How much time do you spend on your own nails? How, much, how often do you go to have your nails professionally done? Um, do you have any serious health issues that you take medications for? My answer would be yes. And while I haven't found that being on the capanol, which is a morphine, I take a lot of morphine based painkillers and that, that I have any issues with lifting or anything like that. Um, are you pregnant? Again, it used to be if you were pregnant, you know, you couldn't keep nails on, a bit like you shouldn't have your hair coloured and that during certain, or chemical stuff done to your hair during certain stages of your pregnancy. Um, and do you have young children in your care? And on the back, it just has dates, services performed, observations that I've seen and noticed, 
nail biter, etc. And for me, prices. I recommend that if it's just a hobby and you're doing it from home, but you're doing family and friends, that you still keep that because I write, you know, what polishes I've put on my customers. I have one customer who wears the same polish every service. Um, she just has manicures. But so when I'm setting up for her, I know that the um, purple pearl, and it's off the top of my head, from the po Pro Polish range, um, Anasidas, that is what she has, that is what she uses, and I know where it is, I get it, it's here, it's waiting with my base top and co coat for her, so I don't have to leave this area and go, well, here's all the colours and that with that particular client. Um, fresh towels, hand towels, um, should be used for every client. Um, all tools and nail files must not be used from one client to the next without cleaning or disinfecting or s sterilization. Um, ask to witness disinfection if you are unsure. If soaking um, in containers, um, the liquid should not appear cloudy um, and contaminated, you know, with dust and debris and particles and stuff. Um, your own file pack is recommended although not mandatory. You may offer, be offered to take it home so you, um, you know no one else has used it or alternatively salons may store them. I store them because I had an issue with letting people take these home. They weren't bringing them back. It's costing me money. I've had to charge them not only for the files they've left at home but for the new ones that they've received they didn't like then the price of their overall service because it made it very expensive but I can't afford to lose out on either um, and again if you're going to keep individual file packs make sure they are stored in non air tight containers or bags as you saw with my last video um, now technicians should not use products from unlabeled and un unmarked containers. Um, you should be able to see clearly marked on, you know, this container um, that has my alcohol in it. It says NSI Cleanse on it. Um, I buy it in bulk. My Now Pure Plus from NSI. Again, it's labelled. My acetone, my non acetone is labelled. Everything is labelled. Um, if it's not in its original container, so my customers can see that. Um, salon room, restrooms where available should be clean. Um, you, they should, you should provide a wash basin along with liquid soap and paper towel, not hand towel. Again, you know, it's just the germ. You don't want to wipe your hands on a, t a hand towel someone else has used private previous to me. Um, I just have a roll of paper towel that's here um, that I just go and put in the bathroom when I've got clients coming um, so they can tear off a piece and dry their hands. Um, if you're using drills, the drill bit should be taken out of disinfection affecting solution in front of you and a new sanding and new sanding bits fitted which have no lines of prior use. The Australian Fingernail Association recommends that drills never be used on your natural nails ever, regardless of the type of drill bit used or speed. If you're experiencing pain, cuts, burns um, from the use of drill bits, stop the treatments and leave. Nail technicians should never use razors or blades on feet. If you see a razor or blade being used on a client's foot then you should leave and contact your local council or the Australian Fingernail Association. They tend to name and shame. Another consumer guidelines um, says avoid nail technicians or salon providers who do not wash or sanitise your hands and hands before performing services. I have bacterial um, the pump or I have a spray um, that's here. Plus I've normally washed my hands and that beforehand anyway. Sorry, I have an itchy nose. Provide services that are painful and cause damage to your skin and nails. 
I know that sometimes that cannot be helped, but our goal is, um, when doing artificial nails, is to enhance them, not damage them. Um, can cannot explain how they clean and disinfect their files, clippers, tool boots when asked. Cannot explain how they clean and disinfect their foot spas when asked. Do not have a logbook indicating um, pedicure foot spas when they're clean and disinfected. Using implements or other objects forcibly to pry off artificial nails. Believe me, that does happen. Um, do not provide each client with a clean disinfectant nail brush for scrubbing underneath nails. Um, these are the ones that are on my desk, but I have a bag um, behind me with extra ones in it. Um, so, because once they're really, really sweat, you know, it makes them hard if you want to use them for dust, for dusting. So, I always have extra ones lying around everywhere. Um, do not use clean, fresh, laundered or disposable towels. Will not show you their current qualifications when you ask to see it. Mine's just always left on my desk in that frame. Um, say they're too busy to properly clean or disinfect their tools. Stick their fingers directly into jars or containers. If so, this doesn't have to be expensive. These cost me $2. They're the big, large paddle pop sticks, you know, for crafting and that. I use that when I don't have something that's pump or an eyedropper or, or, or something like that. Um, do not discuss concerns, ask questions or complete a, con con complete a consultation before performing services. Again, the consultation cards, they're fantastic. It gives you a strong idea of what this client really needs from you. Um, then I have a code of ethics as a member and it says as a professional member of the Australian Professional Fingernail Association I will endeavour to uphold my professional standards by continuing my education thus furthering my skills and my knowledge for betterments of clients to promote professionalism to the public. At all times, conduct my career and my activities in a professional manner, which demonstrates respect of my client, my clients, my colleagues, and my profession. I will not take part in slanderous criticisms or demeaning actions, which may sabotage following fellow Australian Professional Fingernail Association members, either in person or in a business manner. Maintain at all times total com client confidentiality. Comply with Australian Fingernail Association custom consumer guidelines for professional service as well as federal, state and local government and health department requirements to ensure the safety of my staff and my clients. Not initiate not intentionally issue false or misleading information about my skills and services products to conduct my business dealings in a legal, legal and proper manner, to participate and encourage activities to help promote and improve for the betterment of my industry, knowledge, information, experience with my fellow professionals. Value rigorously and respect debate of issues theories, methods and professional practices. Display this code of ethics to ensure all car staff will adhere to the same. Should I fail to renew my membership or uphold this code of ethics, I will return in my badge to the Australian Fingernail Association. So they are my guidelines. Like I said, I have nothing to hide. This folder is available for my customers to read whenever they so choose. And I think educating them on what they should be looking for will help sort out some of this issue that is going on with some of the nail balms that are out there. I'm not going to trash all of them, but I am going to say that a large majority of them, especially over here, there are some issues with. Um, also in this folder, I have uh, just a typed out document, what I did about what um, Polish Pro is by NSI talking about the gel polishes um, and that 
and what you how you look after them. My customers can take that home with them um, to help look after their nails and their service so it lasts longer. The next one is I have is taking care of gel nails which again I've typed out and highlighted and my customers can take that home. And last but not least, I have things that they need to do at home for care of acrylic nails. Now, I pretty much give it to all my customers, regardless whether they've been to a nail salon or not before, because what I am finding are people don't understand they shouldn't be using these as tools. You know, that you have to learn to, I open my car door like this rather than going in like this. You know, I don't open cans of Coke with my nails. Um, you know that you should be wearing gloves when you're having artificial nails on and that and a lot of people also don't understand that artificial nails were originally created as an enhancement and you grew your tip out and then you like I said I have overlays these are my natural nails um, so you grew your own nails out I grew the tip out you could put a product overlay over the top of your nail and it was your original nail especially for the women who have problems with weak nails and um, splitting and all of that kind of thing um, later on I will do a tutorial on how to do overlays and gel and acrylic overlays um, and I'll get into all that stuff um, but I just thought it was important to to remind people that artificial nails are just that. It is to enhance your nails um, until you can get your own natural nails and, um, and go from there. Okay, I think I've waffled on enough. Um, my next video I want to talk about um, M sorry, MSDS sheets and how important they are, whether you're in business for yourself or you're not. Thanks guys.